guys, it's Hazel. This is my first official YouTube uh, video for this channel. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Today we are going to be doing some reacting to um, some Reddit posts, Am I the Asshole type of contents and things and such. Um, the story that we are going to be reacting and reading is Am I the Asshole if I uninvite my sister-in-law who is in love with my husband. Now, just reading, before I even get into the story, my, <laughs> my first reaction is, why is your sister-in-law, which means your husband's sister, why is the sister in love with the husband who is her brother? That's my first concern. My brain immediately goes to just incest. So, First red flag, immediate, okay? Um, so let's let's see what the deal is and uh, all that. So, trigger warning, um, and I guess this goes for everybody, um, anyone watching, whether it's live or this video. Trigger warning for mental health, high-risk pregnancy, and miscarriage. That's already pretty heavy. Um, so, the original post was a month and a half ago. And it says, am I the asshole if I uninvite my sister-in-law who's in love with my husband? Am I the asshole if I uninvite my 32 female sister-in-law? Or, so if I uninvite me, 32 female my sister-in-law, 30 male, or 30 female, let's call her Tina, from my baby shower because I think she's in love with my husband. My husband, 33 male, and I met each other at a ski lodge nine years ago. Okay, first, first, if you've known this girl, because let's be real, let's say even hypothetically, if you and your husband have been together for collectively nine years, at least after a year, you would have met his family. Minimum year. Probably sooner, but we'll say like like maximum a year. You've known potentially, let's make not any assumptions, allegedly, how crazy obsessed with her brother she is. Early. Early. Uh, I was... I was with my young daughter and a female friend and her child. My husband was with his two brothers and three sisters and a few friends. Wow, that's all. The whole family is getting together. Okay. There was a singing competition and both of us were set up by our friends to enter it. I'm immediately getting high school musical vibes. Two people who accidentally get into a singing competition. Little thing in the winter. Fall in love. High school musical. Immediate. That's exact. immediately where my brain goes. If anyone can picture the exact scene in which I'm thinking of, synchronicity. <laughs> Sparks flew during our duet and the rest is history. See? Called it. Back to our first meeting. This was the first time I caught on to my sister's law disturbing behavior. So she knew from day one. This girl knew day one. That the sister-in-law was potentially had a few screws loose okay all right and still continued like I'll, I'll tell you this personally if i met somebody and i did not get along with their family or their family was too much to handle i don't know if it'd be worth being with that person because if you're going to be around the crazy family all the time and like they're all involved heavily in each other's lives you know, you're not just being with that person. You're being with that person and their family. Because just because you don't want to be around their family, if they're having their family in their lives, like, you're marrying into the whole shebang. So it's all or nothing, basically. Um, okay. After the singing competition, he and I went to a cafe to chat. His middle sister, Tina, who was adopted at birth. Okay, see... They're not blood related. That's why the sister thinks it's okay for the. I mean, it. 
it's not technically incest then because they're not blood related but like if you grew up with someone who was your sibling or family regardless that's still weird uh, okay came storming up to us and demanded he come back to their group she never looked at me and winced when she when he shut her down the fact that he had to shut her down is already weird okay she ran off crying and apparently took her sister's room key and locked them out so they had to stay with the friends in their room. Girl, you cray cray. You actual cray cray. You're locking people out of their hotel rooms where their belongings are, where they're probably paying to stay and sleep? Mm-mm. No. No, ma'am. No, sir. Man, we're already six minutes into this video, and I've barely gotten through one paragraph. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll tone my comments down just a little bit. Fast forward to when we bought a house together. We had a housewarming and invited family and close friends. Tina showed up in a sexy club outfit. Girl, girl, no. Time and place. That's why I have so many cute outfits that I have never got to wear because I am not strutting over to my family's house like I'm trying to go to the club. Oh, God. She ignored me the whole time. Keep in mind, they've been together how long at this point? Oh, it doesn't say. Okay. <sighs> she ignored me the whole time and hung out with my... For all of those watching this video on YouTube, I am also live streaming on Kick. Uh, so if I talk to anyone in chat at any point in time, that's why. If I have to interact with my mods or chat or ban anybody, I apologize for the, uh, the disruption. But we'll get back into the story. Um... Yeah, so one of my friends said she thought Tina was weird for talking about how hot his modeling pictures were when he did print work back in college and that her favorite photo was of them at a beach in Hawaii during a family vacation a few years back. So basically you're thinking about your brother modeling shirtless at a beach with you. Okay. So many red flags. The most bizarre thing she told people was that he never dated a woman of color before, and now all of a sudden he's in love. So we got a racist on our hands as well. This is not sitting right. It's only bizarre to me because she's biracial, so I don't know why that would bother her unless she's jealous of me because she wished she was me. Girl, yes. 100% that is, that is it. Then things go south at the end of the night when he gets down on one knee and proposes to me. She started crying and ran to the bathroom. Jealous. Jealousy. 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 Ugh. Um, their dad went to check on her and then drove her home. I knew exactly why she was upset, but my husband always equated her behavior to jealousy because she's never had healthy relationships. Man, I'm telling you, us girls, we can clock that. We can clock that behavior from a mile away. But I feel like there are too many people that are, I mean, not always girls, but I'd say probably 75%. We can clock that toxic behavior and y'all will be like, nah, that's not it. No, it 100% is. After that tantrum, she skipped our wedding, baby shower, and our children's birthday parties and other family events when we attended. I'm sorry. Let's take this, the sibling family aspect out of this. If I had a friend who was in love with my husband and no longer wanted to come to any, fam any events that we mutually had friends at. Okay, let me... <laughs> I'm trying to wrap my brain around this because it's just so fucked. Um... Mm. how do you never get over somebody because if you're avoiding them i feel like you should be able to get over them or why are you thinking about them that hard and aggressive for that long okay all right <sighs> I was fine with extending invitations because I knew she wasn't going to show up. She had some sort of mental breakdown and was in and out of treatment for years. Good. You know what? 
sometimes some people need to have that break just so that they can go seek the help that they need. So good for her. Now I have to say, I wish nothing but the best for her and I don't know what kind of issues she's going through, but I don't want her disrupting our peace. I'm currently pregnant and our baby shower is the end of this month. I'm having it a few months early because I'm at risk for going into labor early like I did with my other two children. My mother-in-law called to RSVP and stated Tina would be riding with them and if it was okay if she brought her new boyfriend. Are we trying to show off the new boyfriend as if we're trying to make the husband jealous? Is that what we're doing here? Is that the whole thing? Ugh. Um, I was surprised because we hadn't seen her in years, but I was apprehensive to agree. Eventually, I did agree and hoped she would, that she had resolved whatever caused her so much distress when she was around my family. Well, it took all of 24 hours for her to start her nonsense. She texted my husband paragraphs at 3 a.m. about how she felt about our family. I'm sorry, but there is a time and place when to keep your mouth shut. 3 a.m. Talking about how she felt about her family. Girl, keep your, keep your opinions to yourself. Like, if you're trying to play nice and be... Go into the events where everyone's at and you have a new boyfriend and you got treatment and everything. Don't come in with the drama hot and heavy immediately to stir the pot when the pot was empty. First, she went on to say how much she missed them being close and how I came in and destroyed their close relationship when I barely said 50 words to her. In nine years, uh, she asked him if he was happy with his life because, again, he said he never wanted kids or to get married. I'm sorry, but I can personally tell you I have had friends tell me how they never wanted to get married or have kids, like one or the other or both, until they met the right person and then things changed. So someone can think that all their life and meet the right person and then change their mind people are entitled to change their mind like it's not when you say something that's the only thing you're allowed to think or feel for the rest of your life just like my style has changed over the years my feelings can change over the years just like anybody else's ick she then asked if if he thought about her at all in this time and if he could meet up with him if she could meet up with him before the shower and talk alone face to face why are you asking your brother did you think at me think of me at all when i've been mia can i see you face to face and we can have a little chit chat before like before i come to your wife's baby shower my fucking niece or nephew's baby shower oh Oh, so many icks. I can tell you right now, in another universe where I was married and I was in this situation, I don't care how pregnant I am. First of all, I'm not getting married. Second of all, I'm not getting, not having kids. And that is something I've stood by for a few years. Again, who knows? Maybe the right one will come along, but still. <laughs> to dead ass say have you thought about me girl you're trying to show up with a whole ass boyfriend and you're still on some petty gross shit i don't care if they're blood related or not that is all the icks Ugh. okay all right um here we go that was the last straw for me i asked my husband if she knew or i asked my husband if he knew she was in love with him and he just shrugged which means he fucking knew uh <laughs> he didn't doubt my theory apparently when she was 11 she asked if they could cuddle and kiss and he said no he admits her behavior since then has always been weird and dramatic but he didn't pay much attention because they were because si they were siblings and hung out all the time i don't care i can tell you right now i have a sister i don't want to cuddle with that bitch but like if i had a brother wouldn't want to cuddle with him either Mm -mm. 
And it's it's kind of fucked if you think about it, because like, in a sense, if he was aware of her feelings, and still hung out with her and let them be close and whatever, like it's in a sense that he was leading her on. So maybe at some point in time, I feel like he should have had a conversation with her and was like, "Hey." we're brother sister i don't care if we're blood related or not but like the feelings that you're having you can't have and if you're going to keep having them i don't feel the same so please stop you're making me uncomfortable should have been a conversation at some point in their lives i feel but i mean i do feel like some people are really shit at communicating and want to ignore things so that's probably what he was doing is just dismissing them which obviously I asked him if he could uninvite her and this new boyfriend because I think she's going to bring drama to our baby shower. He said he wants to talk to his parents first to see what kind of state she's been in. But I know in my gut she's ready to ruin our day with her theatrics. So am I the ass- so am I the asshole for wanting to uninvite her to the baby shower? No, you're not the asshole. I can tell you right now, I despise drama. I hate that nonsense and that chaos, and it is not fun, and it is nothing but toxic, and I would not want my day ruined. So I'm 100% on her side. Okay, let's scroll down a little bit. So the first edit says, for those of you wondering if anything intimate ever happened between them, the answer is no. I'm 100% certain of this. He's had a total of three adopted siblings, two female and one male. He says he sees him as blood-related siblings because three of them were adopted at birth. He's the second youngest, and they're all within one to four years of each other, so he knows them as siblings. He says he chooses to ignore her because she's always been dramatic. He's always worried about her physical safety because she suffered from depression for a long time, as he can remember, so he tries to handle things gently. He's not opposed to uninviting her, but he does want to know what his parents think about her mental state and whether she can behave. First things first, as someone with depression, anxiety, and OCD, diagnosed by a doctor, not self-diagnosed, I do believe that I might have ADD, that's a self-assumption, but... My anxiety, depression, and OCD are medically diagnosed. I talk about mental health a lot. I'm very open about it. I have, like, I, I, I try to be an advocate for people who don't feel comfortable talking about it or if they want someone to talk to or relate to, that's what I try to use my platform for. Um, what I can say, she may very well be diagnosed with depression, like, professionally. However... I have known people who are diagnosed with depression who will lie about when they are in a depression episode. They will use it as a weapon. So, like, for instance, someone might be like, oh, I have depression, and if you don't go hang out with me, then I'm going to become depressed, and I'm going to, who knows, I might hurt myself. Like, that stuff is so toxic and not okay. Like, they're, not everybody can cope with their mental health the best, or in the best ways possible. However, I'm getting those kind of vibes from her. Um, and my question is, I, A, I don't think there's ever a boyfriend that was going to come. Uh, I think that's why she wanted to pull him aside and have a conversation with him alone before the baby shower. And secondly, why does he give a fuck what his parents have to say? Oh my god! Yes, yes, yes. Ha. Huh. I fucking called it. I fucking called it. Second update. Sorry if it's really loud into the mic. You might have to adjust your volumes. So I keep seeing something about high school musical. I told you. I told you. I'm a little bit. (laughs) I'm a little bit too old to have watched that movie slash show. But I don't and didn't know the plot. I changed some details of how we met so that this post wouldn't immediately be recognizable. But very much, unfortunately, is my life right now. My husband is on his way home right now, despite having another three hours left to work because his phone won't stop blowing up. He didn't sound good on the phone, but wouldn't tell me what was wrong. So I went, or yeah, wouldn't tell me what was wrong. I don't want to call his mom and other sister to ask what's going on, but I'll try to post an update when eventually we come to a final solution because I'm stressed over this. 
Weaponizing mental health discredits. Yeah, exactly. But, like, the thing is, is, like, she could actually have mental health issues, but uses them in the wrong ways. Like, when I'm having a mental health, like, if I'm depressed, yes, maybe I'll tell people about it, but, like, I kind of just shut off. Like, I don't talk to anyone. I try to just deal with it by myself. If I need someone to vent to, I'll, like, try reaching out. But, like, I don't know. People do some weird shit. Okay. Update. Ten hours later. Ten hours after this post. Okay. Hi. You can see Coop down there. Okay. Uh, This will probably be my last update, but I decided we need to be completely removed from my sister-in-law's drama slash trauma. First of all, what? I get, please tell us about this trauma because now I'm confused. So we can focus on having a healthy pregnancy and family life. I have an appointment with a, I'm going to pr- try to pronounce that, a high-risk prenatal doctor tomorrow morning that was scheduled weeks ago to check on the baby. Thank you, for you, thank you to those who are concerned about me and the baby. Yeah, that's another thing. Don't add stress if someone's pregnant. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> so I apologize if this update seems all over the place. I have been to the point out for the person who went through my comment, or I also have to point out for the person who went through my comment history, I switched the numbers, genders, and event details so I wasn't easily identified in real life. I have a professional license, so if someone recognized me and thought I was being unethical due to the nature of the post, I've avoided certain verbiage because of my job, I could be brought in for a review, which would very much which I would very much like to avoid, so I'm sorry I can't be 100% truthful in all of the details. i tried my best to keep the most important information as factual as possible. See, that's another thing. I feel like in these anonymous stories, like when people create like throwaway accounts or accounts where you can't necessarily tell who they are, you don't always, like, if, let's say my sister posted something on here and she used enough details where I'd be able to clock her, like... Some people just want to vent and tell a story, and sometimes they actually are the asshole. Um, and so I don't think that's wrong of them to change that, change certain information so that they're not identified. I don't know. <sighs> okay, my husband ran home because Tina blew up his phone, texting and calling. Now my husband always texts or calls me on his lunch breaks to check on me even before the pregnancy, so I knew something was wrong when he didn't. Since he left Tina on red, she started calling and sending a bunch of unwarranted and degrading texts about me, our children, or er, and our children. So basically, Tina being Tina. Oh, the fact that she has to say Tina being Tina, that's so toxic. Oh, I feel so bad for her. Okay. Um, he didn't run it by me. But he sent her a long paragraph, which he showed me when he got home, basically telling her off and told her that he would rather never speak to her again than listen to her to talk bad about our family. He told her she would never be invited <laughs> to any of our family functions and that she needed to check herself back into the hospital if she ever thought their sibling relationship was ever closer than it actually was. Yeah, I think you need years of therapy and even then that might not be enough. I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about this still. Okay, let's keep going. What else happened? Uh, He closed it by saying he'll let the family know the reason why she was uninvited. Ooh, this is one of my favorite things. I don't know why. I don't know why. Is Well, first of all, uh, not sponsored not paid to promote but if anyone loves some good gossip um the podcast normal gossip is so thick and juicy and like that's my favorite thing is i love drama that i'm not involved in directly but i can like stand on the sidelines and like watch um however i do love some good family drama when my aunt comes over to my mom's house I know I'm getting filled in on everything that I have not heard or seen. And she is not a liar and she will not hold back. And so it's always so delicious to hear about all of it. So if I was in this situation, 
and my cousin told me, hey, just so you know, Tina's never going to be at the family functions anymore because she's in love with me. I'd be like, ooh, first of all, called it, saw it, seen it. Second of all, tell me more. Tell me more. Oh, okay. Uh, great. Love that for him. Rooting for him. So glad he's on the same side. He closed it by saying, oh, okay. Uh, and that he hoped seeing a therapist or hope she's either seen a therapist or would find one immediately. Not surprised at his, his response because of things that she pushed him to or because of things she said pushed him to that breaking point. I think the worst thing she said was that my two mis was, oh, wait, hold on. I think the worst thing she said was that my two miscarriages years ago would have been our first child together was caused because we didn't actually belong together and that my body couldn't even carry one of my children to term. You're talking about miscarriages now and that like, well, it's because you weren't meant to be together. Fucking toxic. I'm so glad they cut this bitch off. Ooh, that's gross. I expected her to bring something like this up. Or, oh, yeah, I expected her to bring something like this up, but I could tell it really hurt him, and that's why he didn't hold back on her. He then blocked her and told her, and told me we're changing phone numbers. Oh, God, there's still so much more. Bro, this video's already been going for 30 minutes. Okay, that's fine. He called his parents an oldest biological sister, whom he is close with, and explained to them why she's never allowed to visit our home. He shared all their text exchange and they were mortified. He asked them not to share our address and when we changed to our new numbers, they assured us that none of them shared any information with her because she actually asked for his work schedule and mentioned driving a day early to surprise him. Bro, you're surprising your significant other. You're not surprising your fucking brother. Okay? Okay. Secondly, ooh, if he, if she had shown up at his fucking work, could you imagine? Ooh, ooh, I'm fight, I'm, I'm already ready to fight someone. Shit. After this story, though, I'm about to have some more caffeine, which is probably not a great idea, but ooh, I'm fired up. I'm fired up. I'm awake now. I'm awake. Ooh. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Oh. My father-in-law had the most to say, and I get it. It's his baby girl, and he hadn't shared too much information beforehand with anyone besides his wife. He said he always knew that she had a little crush on him, and after her outburst at our housewarming years ago, they had a conversation about her behavior, and she told him that she's been keeping a diary about him since she was a teenager. Ew! She's probably having fucking fantasies about him and all sorts of nasty, sexy, fucking ugh. What is wrong? Mm, no! No, no, no! That is your brother! I don't care if you're not blood related! Since you were a baby! Ah! Oh. You know what? No. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. I'm gonna keep going. Oh, I. Mm, okay. <sighs> She explained it was to process her emotions and challenge negative thoughts. All I heard was that she was writing about him for years. Same. 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 You've been writing about him for fucking years? And you're try it's to try to get your feelings to be gone? You lying. Who you lying to? Because it ain't about to be me. No. Ugh. So there's several journals in their home. You know what I'd be doing? Hey, mother-in-law, I'm coming over. You want to see your grandbabies? Have her watch the grandbabies for a hot second. I'm about to go dip and find them fucking journals. Make photocopies so I can see them and read them. Is that someone's private, personal, whatever? Yes, but guess what? When you're writing about my husband and you, you're crazy, I need to see the full extent of the crazy and know what I'm in for. It's a safety precaution. I need to know more. <laughs> mm. So there were, there's several journals in their home, probably enforcing her beliefs. Apparently she only stayed away from my husband because my father-in-law kept her in check and was able to get her 
hospitalized several times for being a threat to herself. I don't know if all of her issues stem from her unrequited love for him. Typing, that just made me nauseous. Ugh, same. Reading it. But I hope she gets the help she desperately needs. Agreed. But, like, I don't know if that girl could get enough help. Um... He said that they speak with her, or he asked that they speak with her about his last text and that we don't want to know the outcome. They told us that they would deal with her and apologize for thinking she had resolved her issues. My in-laws are saints and I thank them for believing us and keeping her away all these years. Luckily, she's currently living with them due to her issues, so they're going to speak with her tomorrow morning. I need to find a story. So I think this is going to be our new thing. We're going to do a am, am I the Asshole segment before whatever else we do for stream. I need to find this story that I read a while back because, oh, bitch, it was a juicy one. Different level of juice, but these are the best. These are the best. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Shit. There's so much still. That's fine. Our first upload on the YouTube channel, hour long, am I the asshole? <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, shit. Um, hold on. I'll see, you know, okay. Biological sister-in-law called me when we got off the phone with the in-law. She told me that she was really sorry because she's the one who hooked up the new boyfriend and Tina. Okay, so the boyfriend was real. Okay, okay. It suggested that she show him off at the baby shower. <sighs> I think you're putting the wrong thoughts in her head though but admitted they'd only been dating for like two weeks she said she sent the text tina sent to my husband to the boyfriend probably because that's one of her best guy friends and wanted to protect him so i'm pretty sure they're not a thing anymore i fucking hope not you know here's what i will say guys claim that they like to fuck crazy but they won't like date crazy that might be a little too crazy i don't know might be a little too crazy Oh, I'm kind of nervous of how Tina will deal with two rejections, <laughs> two rejections so close together. The two sisters that aren't close, or, oh, the two sisters aren't that close, and she audibly disgusted to find out the sister had been pining for their brother all these years. She has a theory, though. She thinks it started with the older biological brother, Sean, because when Tina was little, she'd follow Sean around all the time. He's older, and he went off to college abroad. Tina was about 10, and... And then he permanently moved to Europe. So it seems like she had a crush transferred to my husband when Sean left. Sean hadn't been back to the States since he graduated high school. And no one's in contact with him, so she can't call So she can't call and ask him about it. I have to admit, I'm kind of curious and would have been interested in hearing what Sean had to say. But I'll, I'll rest assured knowing our involvement in the whole thing is over. It is. Well, the boyfriend, I think, there, there's no way the boyfriend's still together. Uh, secondly, I want, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring out how to hit up Sean. I'm going to do everything in my power to hit up that man and ask him about this tiny child that used to follow him around and have a crush on him. Someone pointed out that Tina is potentially dangerous and could hurt me or our children. She sounds crazy. She's trying to pull up at your house with a knife. Why? Why am I doing, why? Why? Why am I doing Am I the Asshole content? Because some of these stories are so juicy, I have to share them and my reactions. If you're not interested, you can come back later. We do other content. This isn't my main primary primary thing, but I love reading these stories on Reddit. And I figured why not read them with you guys because I think they're just a lot. Um, yeah, that girl showing up with a knife for sure. Uh, not a gun. She, she's a knife. She likes to stab you and like see, ha, be face to face with you while she kills you. That's the kind of time, type of psycho she gives off. Yeah. Restraining order. hundred percent. My husband is going to upgrade our alarm system and purchase more cameras. Um, I don't work summers and will most likely be out or most likely be out on bed rest by the time I go back to work. So he wanted to Ensure the kids and I are safe while he's away from the house. I forgot to mention we live about five hours away, so she would really have to go out of her way to show up if she somehow found out where we live. Wouldn't put it past her. If she was going to show up at his place of work 
and was trying to find out his work schedule and was blowing up his phone and wanted to have a private one-on-one -on -one before the baby shower. Full circle. Full circle. She's, she'll drive that five hours. She'll drive it. Don't you worry. So that's it, basically. The most likely, or this will most likely be my only update. I also want to point out for those who think my husband was intimate with her at some point to cause her erratic behavior. If that were the case, she would have loved to throw that in my face over and over again. Plus, a guilty man would have tried to silence her a long time ago to keep me from finding out. You don't have to trust him, but I do. Thanks again for all the helpful input. I'm feeling a little bit more at ease and can't wait to see our closest friends and family at our shower. That was August 3rd. Okay. Aug or September 8th. Whole month has gone by. Probably the baby's already popped out. Let's see. Okay, we're almost done. I'm going back and forth on whether I should post an update. Many of you who posted supportive feedback and there were some kind enough to share their experiences with obsess obsessive persons and how I should handle my situation so it helped me through this update. I included Tina, Tina's initial text after we changed our numbers. We were receiving... Oh, were there initially screenshots? Okay. Well, I, don't, I don't see no screenshots. The fuck? Okay. Um... Or did I just fucking leave off? Okay. We are receiving calls from her on our house phone from her work number. So she's not just even calling on her number. She's not, She fucking... She was calling from her work phone. She's like, well, that number's not blocked. She cray cray. I'm telling you. Um, but we disconnected it once we found out it was her. <laughs> they said, we don't even need a house phone no more. Delete it all together. Um... I wasn't sure how to organize my thoughts on this post, but I think it would be easier to give an update by listing each person involved. Again, I had to alter some information because of my career and the fear of being doxxed, which is so fucked up that you just exist on the internet and that is a legit real fear. That's fucked up. Tina's been quiet for a few weeks because Tina's currently receiving treatment. Good. Good for her. At first, I thought it was going to be messy because she found out my husband's new number and texted him several times. There was a, because it says attached. She, there was screenshots attached. I want to see the screenshots. What the fuck? Okay, fine, whatever. Ugh. He ignored the text and blocked her. Her reaction to this rejection caused issues for her losing her job, relationship, etc. That There's no way that man would have stayed with her if he knew that. No. Her relationship was gone the minute the other sister fucking outed her. Her losing her job, though, like, damn. How are, you, how are you losing your job, though? How are you losing your job over this? Girl, get it together. But ultimately, she's getting help now, and I hope this time she can heal from whatever it is that is keeping her from living a happy life. Sean. Many people speculated that my husband or Sean did something to Tina to cause her obsessive behavior. First, I thought Sean, my husband... I thought Sean was my husband's biological brother. That was my assumption because he looks like their father in the pictures I've seen in family albums. And my husband, husband never referred to any of his siblings as the adopted ones. So he just, they're all, like, they're just his siblings. That's awesome. Which I love. Yeah, same. But it caused some confusion on my end because only two of them stand out from the others. This is important to mention because it explains Sean's departure from the family. Sean left her at... Sean left, Jesus fuck, Sean left after high school because he found his birth family to his native country. He searched for his birth parents all senior year of high school and found older siblings. His parents are deceased, but he started visiting his siblings while studying abroad. He became heavily involved with their religion and customs. After college, he cut ties with my husband and his whole family. My in-laws received a few postcards at first, but they haven't been in contact with him for years. Can't say definitely whether I believed something happened between Sean and Tina, but his departure made sense, and I can only hope nothing happened. That's good. That, like, anyone who is adopted, if they are able to find their biological parents and have either some type of closure or get involved with that, that side of the family or anything, like, that's, that's nice. My husband, again, <laughs> I want to make it a thousand percent clear. There's no doubt in my mind that my husband... Never aided Tina's obsession. Those who are doubtful, I get it. But respectfully, I trust my husband. Me. I feel like a weight has been lifted. Even if temporarily. 
<laughs> my baby shower was amazing and knowing she was far away getting help allowed me to fully enjoy my friends and family looking forward to meeting our baby and i hope we have peace from the situation for a long time to come that was it that was the final update <laughs> in conclusion don't fall in love with your family i will say that according to psychology freud says that Every little boy had a crush on their mom, and every little girl had a crush on their dad. According to psychology, that is allegedly a thing. Um, so I could see potentially if that part of psychology is to be believed and trusted and true. If you spend a lot of time with someone, you're going to develop feelings. So I could see potentially brothers and sisters getting crushes on each other, but I would hope and assume that you would grow out of it. I get that they're not blood related, but like, come the fuck on. And then to be that jealous of your brother's wife, I just, I don't get what is wrong with people. I just don't. I'm hoping she is getting mental health. I hope she doesn't show up and hurt any persons or children. I don't feel like this is the end of it. This might be the end of this particular story, but I feel like in the future, this person is going to have more drama with that crazy sister-in-law. Point blank period. But that was it for Am I the Asshole? Thank you guys all for watching. I hope you enjoyed um all my socials will be linked down below subscribe if you had not there's plenty more content to come so stay tuned be on the lookout for all that fun stuff and um if you want to ever watch live and interact um follow me on kick and come join the fun and and hang out but i'll see you guys all later bye